What's up guys, just the other day I was having a one-on-one -on -one call with somebody that used to be really successful selling t-shirts on Amazon before Amazon merch existed. And our conversation really had me thinking about <laughs> kind of projecting the future of not print on demand in, I mean, maybe print on demand as a whole, honestly, but really specifically, if we limit the scope to the future of Amazon merch, I started thinking to myself, how realistic is it that we could be replaced? Because, well, you know what? I'm going to elaborate. I'm going to tell this guy's story in this video and then you make up your own mind. So let's get to it. Make sure to use the links in the description to get my free print on demand mini course and to join my Amazon merch Facebook group. I'd love to have you there. So our story begins with Vince being a pet photographer, but an ambitious one to his credit. And I really tip my hat to him, my backwards hat to him for the success he was able to achieve. He said that he was selling around 200 shirts a day on Amazon seller central using a lot of the graphics that he basically obtained through his work as a photographer. Now, he wasn't doing custom shirts. At least, I don't think he was. He showed me some of the stuff he was working with. It didn't look like he was doing customizations. It looked like he was doing things more along the lines of um, taking the photographs that he took and then, you know, ignore the part here behind me that says add your text. He would add his own text and just make funny dog-related t-shirts and then swapping in and out different breeds and ranking really well, selling t-shirts to, you know, people that own that dog breed. It's a great business model, right? And he was being rewarded with really a ton of sales. Now, granted, he was doing his own fulfillment, which of course, you know, he, you don't need to hear it from me. He said that that was getting a little crazy. You know, success comes with the additional work, <laughs> but it's a, it's a good problem to have. Here's where I started thinking like, okay, I know what happened to, to Vince, you know, number one, it was a lot of work, but he's making a lot of money. But then what happens is Amazon merch comes around and that wasn't coincidental guys. Amazon is a cutthroat company. They are known to do this where they use the data that they have operating the marketplace to basically find, you know, you've seen like Amazon owned brands like Amazon basics. And then they have a bunch of brands where they don't put Amazon in the name, even though they do own the brand. They have so much information on their back end that they can identify like this, you know, uh, perfect opportunities to go in and just dominate a market with an Amazon owned brand uh, and, and make huge, huge margins. Right. Uh, it was no coincidence that Amazon merch now called Amazon merch on demand kind of came out of the blue and rocked the whole print on demand space on Amazon because all of a sudden you're competing with. Amazon owned listings that are prime eligible. Of course, that's going to make it hard for the FBM third party sellers like Vince. And over time, he just kind of transitioned out of doing it. At least that's my understanding uh, because it was so hard to compete with the Amazon merch listings. Of course, also, you know, they took on a bunch of sellers. Those sellers could over time, you know, get more and more upload slots to create more and more product listings. And Amazon has so much infrastructure you know, much nicer machines, the staff to run them. Uh, he, he basically had a really tough time competing. And, you know, to this day, I don't know if he still sells in Seller Central. I'm pretty sure he said he didn't, but he is on merch now. And that's really what we were talking about on the call. But will we be replaced, right? Think about how Amazon makes their money. They love, and I, I want to credit Bezos, even though he's no longer CEO, but he's known for trying to make the highest revenue per employee possible. Meaning he doesn't just want to start hiring employees just for the, the sake of it. He wants to hire the one as many as he needs, but also constantly be looking to the future for solutions. Like FBA is my favorite. When I uh, visited an FBA warehouse, I don't know if they still do them. I did it probably in like 2018, maybe 2019, I think it's 2018. And I think their wait list was like seven months. And there's only so many of them that you can even visit. At the time, I think there was like six in the United States that you could go see. And there was one in like Richmond, Virginia. So I drove down with my mom. She accompanied me that day, <laughs> took the day off work. And uh, we went and saw the FBA warehouse. Before we got the tour of the warehouse, they sat us down, they showed us a video and it was showing us kind of like the projection of the future of how these fulfillment facilities would work. By the way, I was the only person that was visiting that actually sold 
um, FBA products, which is a little bit weird. I'm like, what is everybody else doing here? Uh, anyways, the futuristic ones were going to have robots go and grab the shelf that contains the product and kind of do like a reverse hydraulic press like and lift the shelf up and then drive the shelf over to the human who remains stationary, who picks the product off the shelf, packs it, ships it out, right? On a conveyor belt, by the way, which those already exist. But the whole point is like, it's very forward looking and it's no surprise that they're gonna do this, even if it costs a ton of money in R&D, because over time, it's gonna be beneficial and more profitable. Plus they're publicly traded, which I think more or less incentivizes this forward looking um, aspect because you know you can you can <laughs> see your stock price go on a tear just from telling a good story sometimes like look at Tesla <laughs> in the last couple years anyway sorry to offend any Tesla people but I mean come on now um, Amazon advertising right not a lot of humans involved in running that uh, even Amazon merch on demand it's like I'm sure they're constantly improving their workflows I don't know this firsthand but um, Kindle Direct Publishing kind of similar to Amazon merch on demand Amazon Associates is just letting you and I increase sales on the Amazon platform by giving us a little percentage of each sale for the referrals we make. It used to be a lot higher, by the way. And of course, they tapered it down over time, as you would expect, because they're greedy. Uh, Amazon Ignite was kind of their attempt at doing teachers pay teachers, selling like digital education products, but they closed that down because it never really um, caught caught hold. Anyways, the point is, man, they're, they're very forward looking. It's evident in everything that they do. And I mean, this isn't even everything they do. You know, look at AWS, by the way, Amazon Web Services. Again, like scalable, um, they have the physical infrastructure, but like the software allows you to kind of scale with the demand um, on your website. So you're not constantly paying for something that you're only using every now and then. You kind of pay for what you use as you go. So is AI, this is what I'm thinking, is AI gonna replace us, the Amazon merch sellers? And sorry if that was a long-winded way of getting here, but like, for real, think about this. AI today, like what do we really do on Amazon Merch? We we create designs and then we add keywords. But Amazon doesn't need us to pay for these research tools that data mine Amazon and try to create like parallel databases that we can then go query to find the best trends. Amazon knows the best trends. So they need us to go create designs that they can then uh, essentially sell for us because the Amazon Merch listings are Amazon listings and then they do the fulfillment. But why not cut us out? Like they can use tools like I mean, I, I know that they're not going to go and use like Creative Fabrica's Spark, but the whole point is that like these tools are becoming more and more abundant, and like Creative Creative Fabrica Spark, right? So I went back a couple slides and I grabbed the picture of a pug here that somebody had turned into a T-shirt design. Let's say that this pug never existed. You can still go to the AI tools and you can say, I want to see a pug dog with trees in the background. Right. And then look, Creative Fabrica Spark generates a bunch of different styles for us to use. And I'm sure you could tweak the AI to generate these graphics against a transparent background. I'm sure it wouldn't be that hard for like Amazon engineers to figure out. You could use Canvas AI. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I like these two because they're more geared for print on demand sellers. Obviously, there's a ton of these AI tools that can create these custom images, just rows and columns of pixels, right? They're just rows and columns of pixels and they do it for us on demand. We provide the text, they provide the images. It's literally called text to image on Canva. Uh, and you can tell it different styles on Canva. So on the left one here, you see the painting style. And on the right, it's like the more photorealistic style. Uh, but this is just to illustrate guys that like, how far away are we removed from Amazon realizing that they don't need us paying us out our, you know, 20 to 30% royalty per sale and just using an AI tool to generate these graphics for them that goes straight into, cause it wouldn't just be, you know, the way they would streamline this workflow is the, they, their algorithm that monitors search volume can essentially look for um, queries that include the word shirt, you know, that include the product type that Amazon merch can fulfill in their infrastructure. Then they can say, okay, we're getting a lot of overlap here, or it could even be on demand for the, for each customer as they search, if they can do this fast enough, you know, uh, but they could say, okay, we're seeing a lot of search searches for pugs. So let's have our AI create like, you know, however many shirts show up on page one, we'll do 40 pug shirts uh, with transparent backgrounds. We'll have them mocked up over the Amazon merch t -sh standard t-shirt. And if it sells, we, we capture 100% of the profit. We don't have to pay out the human, uh, the middleman for a royalty. So 
I don't know, guys. Sorry. Is this a weird, is this a doom and gloom video? Is, is it a bleak video? Because I guess it is for me, you know, the guy who's, you know, the talking head on YouTube uh, making a living talking about it. But, I mean, it doesn't seem that far-fetched to me. It seems like it for sure could happen. And will it? I mean, I don't know. You know, it, we're talking about Amazon here. Unfortunately, it is the, the company that I would say, oh, well, you know, Amazon might do that, but probably nobody else. It's Well, unfortunately, it is Amazon that we're talking about here. And I could totally see them doing it. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, obviously, like, I can't say obviously. Will AI be able to do it better than humans? I was going to say humans can do it better, but I don't know. I don't know. The problem is Amazon has so much data because everything on the web can be quantified and tracked and databased and it's there forever. So I really don't know, guys. I don't know. Um, anyways, this is a fun video to kind of as a little thought experiment. Uh, let me know your thoughts. By the way, in the description, uh, while we can still sell on Amazon merch and make money, you can learn from me. I'm in tier 200,000. So if you would like to learn my approach to Amazon merch, this is full spectrum from tier 10 all the way to tier 200,000. You can learn that in the description, guys. Uh, and I got a link to my private community where I go live once a week and do office hours once a week. If you want to work with me or help me help your business, that's the best way to do it. Link in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow with a new video.